Okay, good morning. Welcome to Yoga Small Plates, little bites of nourishment to nourish the exhausted yogi. Today's day 12, and our focus today comes from a request that I had um, two days ago in the comments, which said, because I've been focusing so much on the, on the kidney energy, and someone said, what about the liver? And that's a really good question. So let me just be clear again that kidney and liver is not the same thing as the kidney and liver organ, particularly when you're coming from more of an Eastern perspective. So I spent many years studying Chinese medicine, and I've also studied, not as much, but I've also studied Ayurveda. And um, in those systems, the thinking about the organs is, uh, how does the organs how do the organs affect the rest of the system how do the organs affect the prana maya kosha right the energy system of the body and not as focused on sort of the metabolic functions of those organs so we know like in western medicine the liver holds a lot of blood it has something like it does something like 500 i could be totally wrong but i remember hundreds of processes in the system so it's a very important, as you know, and complex organ um, that has many functions in the system. Now, in the Chinese system, when you think about the liver, uh, the liver is, of course, it's holding blood. The Chinese understood that. But they also understood the liver as needing to be involved in the smooth flow of qi or prana. So the smooth flow of energy is an important function of the energy of the liver making things flow smoothly through your system. So how does that relate? Well, some of the things we've been talking about are the different kinds of exhaustion, particularly from the perspective of Ayurveda, right? So we talked about vata, pitta, kapha. We talked about worn out, burned out, and vegged out, and how those look differently depending on the constitutional type, depending on which of the doshas is provoking or which of the doshas is pushing the system. So liver burnout would look a lot like pitta. It, uh, when the liver flow of energy is not happening, we get stuck in the body. So we get tightness in the body. Uh, and we also get stuck in the mind and it creates irritability, impatience, anger in the mind. So those are some of the things that we can address by bringing more clarity and tejas into the system. And we're gonna do that by providing um, a few practices this morning. I'm only gonna do, I'm only gonna do three postures actually. Um, the th things that are good for moving the stuck energy of the liver, of course, include things like pushing a little bit uh, exercise wise. So like that can often help liver energy to, to, to move through. Um, but you know, you think a little bit more from the Ayurveda side, I try not to mix the models so much, but it's hard. When you think about it a little bit more from the yoga side, also, what do you need? Uh, what does the liver need? What does anger and impatience need? A lot of times it needs compassion, it needs softness, because that's the opposite of the sharpness, right? So we'll bring a little softness into the practice today. Now, let me show you one more thing before we get started. The energy of the liver, this is the gallbladder meridian that runs here, and that's the partner of the liver and down on the side of the leg to your little ring toe, and then the liver energy starts at your big toe and it comes up the inside of the body, the inside of the body, or the inside of the body to here to the side. So the sides of the body and the inside of the legs are, are, are important. Uh, and in the asana practice, which to this morning, we'll target the sides of the body a little bit. Okay, so let's get started. So come on up to hands and knees. If you have time, to do a little more warm up for some of these postures that's also really important so like apanasana and um dwipada pittam on your back really useful to get started um depending on how much energy you have you know but if your exhaustion is what it is you might just start here with me hands underneath the shoulders knees underneath the hip and on an inhale we'll um Lower the chest a bit and then lift it up out of the hips and pull your hands isometrically back so you're gliding your chest between your upper arms. On the exhale, lay the forearms down, tuck your chin in, and then bring 
uh, your hips back. And let's do that again. So we'll inhale forward and exhale back. Now, an, an adaptation of this posture, which is called Chakravakasana, which may be useful for the liver, is to slip the hands a little further in front. It might feel a little strange or imbalanced at first, or you might kind of remember it because you've done child's pose like this before. And what this does is give you a little bit more of um, openness or smoothness, smoothness in that stretch in that liver meridian. So we're, uh, it's really gallbladder, but anyway, they're partners in that gallbladder meridian. So in that area that's balancing for the liver, the sides of the body. We spend so much time thinking about the front and the back of the body. The sides, not as much. So one more here, inhaling forward, exhaling back. Oh, goodness. Sorry, I forgot to shut off my ringer on my phone. Let me do that. Can you guys give Dad a call? Because he just called me on the, on the phone, and I'm, I'm live streaming. Sorry about that. That was my husband interrupting me. Okay, so, <laughs> so Chakravakasana. And then after that, we're going to come to seated. <laughs> and, um, and then we're going to get into the side body again, right? So on the in seated poses, by the way, are typically way at the end of the practice, but I'm just going to do a little bit here. So on the inhale, reaching up and slightly over to get into this area. And then on the exhale, say hello, <laughs> draw the lower belly in. So keep the lower belly firm, inhaling into the side body. You can look up at it. And then on the exhale, like bring your hand back to that hello mudra, I like to call it. And also what you're doing is kind of tuck it in the shoulder blade in a bit. And we'll do one more. And this time you can stay here. I'm just using my right hand to support a little softness in the elbow. As you inhale, you make it a little longer through the side body. As you exhale, you might want to soften the elbow, draw your belly in. Let's do two more. Okay, last breath. And then a complete exhale all the way down. Now, this is so important before you do the other side to stop and pay attention to the sensations in that uh, side of your body. I started with my left arm, but you might have started with your right. I don't remember how I cued it. Okay, now let's do the other side. So, it, because they feel different, right? And that's an important, that starts to make important neuroplastic changes in the brain to notice that noticing. So we'll say hello on the other side, and then on the inhale, we're gonna reach, look up. And then on the exhale, come back down, tuck your shoulder blade in. Good, let's do it again, inhale. Up at your hand. Exhale, draw the lower abdomen in. Support and say hello. Do it again. This time we'll stay here. You can soften on the exhale. On the inhale, you might want to look up, depending on what's going on with your neck. If it's not comfortable, don't do it. You can look down. Exhaling, softening. One more. Using your breath to press open the space between the ribs and then down. So what we just did was uh, was was sort of accentuate the sensations in the side body, which is so very much related to this liver energy. Now we're going to go down on our backs, and I'm going to show you a particular twist that you can use here that's useful for liver energy. Again, in terms of sequencing, in terms of safety, in terms of risk of asana. I'm very particular about how the asanas get sequenced and um, lots of gratitude to one of my main teachers, Gary Craftsow, who showed me, uh, who really helped me to understand sequencing in a much deeper, more profound way. So typically like a twist is not something to put at the beginning of a practice. It's just not a good idea in terms of musculoskeletal, but we can do some kind of baby twists. That can be really nice. So I'm going to show you a couple of those. I hope you can see my Instagram. Okay, so here's a couple. So to start, one of the ones I like is soft elbows, palms open, and feet might be wide, and then the face just rock side to side in opposition to the knees. So the face and the knees just do this little side rocking. Not a big twist, a small twist and noticing the, the sensations in the side body here. So that can be okay in the beginning of a practice. I don't like big, big twists, even supine twists, which are the safest way to twist, obviously, because the 
spine's not loaded. Okay, so that's one opportunity. And then this is the other one that I love. It's a Feldenkrais twist. You let the one leg go towards the floor and then the other leg kind of follows it. And your arm might do something like this, especially in the beginning where it just kind of rolls and then you roll to the other side. I like to call this one the baby twisting because it's it's like something you would see a baby doing. And I'm sure Feldenkrais got this by watching babies as he did many of his movements. Okay, I shouldn't say I'm sure. I, I would suspect that's where he got it from. Okay, we'll roll to the other side. So this is a nice gentle twist to start with and it gets into the side bodies, but without overdoing um, uh, the spine, you know, without over stre stre stressing the spine in the beginning of a practice. I'm really just roll, it's really just rolly. So when you think about exhaustion, you want to think about simple things that people can do to get a little bit of movement in the body and to, and to restore as opposed to just asking for a lot, you know, asking for too much from the body. So we'll balance that by bringing knees to chest a few times. So this would be an exhale and an inhale. And when you're ready, you can bring your feet flat, take a moment and rest and notice. See if you kind of worked some of those um, lines of energy. I want, I, I, just because I can't control myself, I want to show you a couple of other little things. So one would be, this is a great liver stretch. Exhale and uh, inhaling out and exhaling in. Sometimes it would be called Supta Parangustasana. Inhale, an adaptation or a variation of Supta Parangustasana. That's a great one. And then staying in the pose, right? And that's because it's getting these meridians on the insides of the legs. So that's a really nice one to add if you have time. And then another one that I would add is Agni Sara, where you're pressing into the belly. Sorry, I, I'm like way too much information. I know from my yoga small place, but it's hard. Um, <laughs> so let me know how it goes. Give the practice a try today. Uh, questions and comments. We got two more days in the unchallenged, and um, I hope to see you back here tomorrow morning. Thanks for being here. Namaste.